Hey everybody, my name is Howard Wiley. I'm here from the East Bay Center for the Performing Arts and welcome to our virtual Black History Month celebration. Today you'll be learning about a few different kinds of music and dance that are important parts of Black history, our forms from the African diaspora and our forms that were created right here by African Americans. Let's start at the foundation of all, all the cool stuff, all the cool music and dance that we celebrate in our culture comes from West Africa. I'd like to introduce C.K. Lazepo and Betty Lazepo. C.K. is from the southern part of Ghana. That's in West Africa. Making music is a very important uh, part of the life. So dance drumming is the blood and bone of Ghanaian culture. In joy and in sorrow, the Ghanaians found the rhythms of the ancestors to be witnesses. The music is polyrhythm, meaning there will be several beats put into motion simultaneously. To do the dance, you will have to come to learn the language of the drum. It's a language, just like how English is a language. <laughs> the drum language speaks to the dancer and the dancer responds. There's a conversation that goes on between the music and the dance. We use like bells and we rattles, and especially the bell, uh, the bell is what keeps you on beat the entire time. And so if you go off the beat, then that means you're no longer really connected. In addition to that constant beat, there's other beats that the drums are playing, the rattle is playing, all those things are going on at the same time. And you have to under be able to understand what the drum is asking you to do in a dance. Man, that was great. I'd like to give a big thank you and shout out to CK and Miss Betty for all that wonderful knowledge of Ghanaian music and dance and how it all relates. I'd like to talk to you all a little bit about the transatlantic slave trade. This took place between the 1500s and the mid 1800s where Africans were kidnapped from West Africa and sold throughout the Americas, North America, South America, and the Caribbean. We were stripped of all language, sense of self, and knowledge of self and culture. But this one thing remained, that creative spark. And we're gonna talk about that creative spark in Trinidad and then in North America. <laughs> I am Akwasi Abrafa. I teach at Richmond College Prep, the RCP, elementary school music there. This instrument right here is the steel pan. It originated in Trinidad and Tobago. So, you know, if you're going down south to Los Angeles, even down to Mexico, gotta go further, all the way down to the tropics, you get to Trinidad and Tobago where a group of kids that were elementary school age and middle school age started making instruments just like this. Steel pan is a part of a history that stems back to the West African culture of the people who were brought to Trinidad and who came later of their own volition as well. Part of what pan tries to do is, is break all these boundaries. They had drums, the drums were banned. They had tambu bamboo, the bamboo was banned. So they started making steel pans and they wanted to express themselves. So steel pan is often performed in what are called like steel pan orchestra, steel pan ensembles. And like part of the ensemble is not just steel pan, but the engine room is a big part of this. The engine room includes what we call non-pitch percussion or like we have congas, we have big African drums, we have iron, which is literally the brake drum from a car. There are bottles, shakers, which they call shock shock. But steel pan then comes in 
And that creates the whole orchestral sound of a pan yard. Man, that was so wonderful. Thank you for dropping all that knowledge on us about Trinidad, the steel pan, the creative spark that lies with inside all of us. If we don't have instruments, we will make instruments. We will hear those sounds and find a way to express ourselves creatively. That was beautiful. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the blues created right here in America. The blues gives you the ability to express something, how you feel, convey that emotion to others and feel good while helping you get through the pain. lifeblood of all American music is the blues. It's the most essential part of jazz. It's the most essential part of rock. It's the thing that makes our head bob when we listen to hip hop. It's the blues. It's the sound. It's the feeling and expression of the black Americans. And the sound started spreading throughout the United States in two migrations. The first was to Chicago, New York City, Boston, D.C., then the second great migration was to California, where cities like Los Angeles, places like the Bay Area, Oakland, in particular, Richmond, California, and Vallejo, California. People from Texas, Arkansas, and Louisiana brought a very particular type of sound. And when you talk about music of the South, New Orleans in particular, you have this tradition called Second Line where you march, where you parade, where you play the blues, where you have fun, where you engage other people. This was so cool because we were able to do this in Richmond. We marched all around the city playing cool music. People came out their houses and danced with us. People heard us and started playing instruments. It was wonderful. The, tr the tradition of community and love through the blues is so evidently present in our second line tradition, especially in our Richmond second line. Out of the blues came one of our country's most popular forms and highest respected forms of music, which is jazz. Jazz has the blues, it has swing, it's sophisticated, it's cool, it makes you feel good. It's certain people like Mary Lou Williams, who was a great arranger for Duke Ellington and created the first woman in jazz festival. People like Duke Ellington and Miles Davis that were international stars of this music. And, and then we have younger musicians like Cindy Blackman Santana and Tia Fuller who are carrying on the tradition of this great music. We're going to have Tiffany Austin tell us a little bit more about this wonderful music we call jazz. has a beautiful through line. So when we look at these art forms that are coming out of the African American community, we see the commonalities, right? The blues grew up out of hardship, out of folks didn't have a job going through Jim Crow, right? It's through segregation. When we look at jazz at the time, people still enduring seg segregation and, you know, just inhumane conditions um, and treatment in the society. And then when we get to hip hop, we see a community making do with what they have, taking, you know, records and creating art. 
and speaking to their times. So that is the alchemical nature of black music and in particular jazz, right? Folks taking lead and turning it into gold. The last thing Tiffany talked about was hip hop and that is the last art form we're gonna to explore today. After the civil rights movement, there were still no instruments. Music programs and schools were closing. Schools in largely populated black areas weren't offering anything to help us express ourselves musically. So in the same fashion that the brothers in Trinidad did, in the same fashion that the folks did during the turn of the century, they used what was around them to create. Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> it's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. And there was the formation of hip hop. Deontay is going to tell us a little bit more about it. My name is Deontay, um, AKA Mr. D to all my students out there. And I teach at the East Bay Center for the Performing Arts, uh, mainly for the schools of Mir Vista and Nystrom. I also teach on site all the beginning hip hop dance classes. Yeah, it's really dope to be a teacher now because I started there when I was 12. Hip hop is a culture, it's a, it's a movement, it's a way of life, it's talking, it's walking, it's dressing, it's thinking. Um, so it's not just dance, it's not just music. It's, it's its own thing, it's alive. Hip hop is a fusion of other uh, musical forms and other art forms. Like jazz is one that mainly inspired, from my understanding, that mainly inspired hip hop. Like they used to take the music and DJ it and scratch it up, stop it, play it. Funk music, soul music. So all of that, all of that plays a part into hip hop. And the movement, almost all movements come from West African or like African culture because it's all grounded in the bouncing, using the earth and staying low. Dancing allows you to, in a way, transmute or change your emotional energy. So like, say if you're sad, you learn how to take the sad energy, which makes you want to like, you know, sit down, do nothing, be lazy and convert that into something to empower you to move. Right on, Mr. D. Thank you for telling us so much about hip hop, dance, Richmond, and how to express thine self. I love it. I also loved how you said jazz and hip hop are kind of together. They kind of like the same thing. They come and feed off each other. All these art forms you learned about today are different yet connected through the blues and through the story of a people. You've seen how music and dance and other art forms travel across the world and lead to new ideas, new art, and how important it is to explore and understand our roots. Thank you guys for joining us for the celebration of Black History Month. Every day, every month is a celebration of Black history and Black history is American history. Thank you and see you next year.